So that was an interesting, you know, situation with them being impacted um, while doing at home workouts because I had to completely change everything for them. Um, so we've been good um, and definitely healthy and still maintaining our fitness and, you know, nutrition during it all. Where are you guys located now? We are in Arizona. So oh. I am in Mesa, Arizona, um, you know, a sub of Phoenix. Everything is kind of crammed in in this area. So um, I've been out here. I'm actually an Arizona native. So hmm. it's home. <laughs> yeah, so I'm here in Jersey and uh well, it's uh, it's okay over here, but there's uh, they're starting to open a few things. I see tomorrow they're starting to open gyms now, but 25% capacity, and we got to wear a mask too. So that's a thing. Um, how's it down there in Arizona? Um, actually, they just started the second round of opening up the gyms. So last week, um, there was a gym that you could go to, and it's pretty big out here. I don't know if you guys have it back east. It's called EOS Fitness. Oh. Um, they opened up and you have to schedule a reservation. You have to wear your mask. And this time it seems like they're really about enforcing it. The first time around, it kind of wasn't the, you know, them being on top of you having the mask police. So that's probably why they ended up getting closed down. Hmm. So things are kind of getting back to normal here in regards to that. All the food is open. They have casinos open, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, but yes, a lot of people here are super, super excited to get back in the gym, you know, at whatever cost that may be for the mental health is what I'm hearing the most. And uh, you have a kid, right, too, right? Or I do. He yeah. is eight. He'll be nine in December. Oh, wow. So what are yeah. they doing with the schools in Arizona? Are they open that up or? We have been virtual. He goes, he's in a school district where they go year round. Um, so he's been virtual since August 5th. Okay. And then after fall break, they're going to go back in person for the people. They allowed you to choose if you opted in to go. Um, you go back after fall break. So I think that's in October. So let me ask you this, because um, some parents here in Jersey are really concerned with the schools opening. So for you, are you really are you concerned as a parent that they're, they're, they're letting the kids back in this school? Over? I am, you know, and it's I think it's just because, you know, one, like, obviously, I'm just you know, scared mom. Um, and then his father contracted COVID while he was with his father. Hmm. So he had to quarantine. So that in a weird way, both freaked me out and kind of makes me feel better because he came out of it negative. My son didn't catch anything. None of us has caught it since he's been home. So, you know, I, I do feel a little better. His school has been great as far as communicating the steps that they're taking, you know, showing us visuals of what they're going to be setting up. Um, but, you know, it's still scary. You're still taking a huge risk with sending your child back. Um, my son is nine years old. He's in a, in a phase in his life where socializing and developing social skills is extremely important. Um, so I'm just kind of walking that fine line and just, you know, keeping my faith and just trying to constantly, um, remind him of what needs to be done in order to keep him safe hmm. so, so it's uh, scary regardless no matter what <laughs> yeah so uh, before we get into your fitness career i want to bring up bring up an important topic uh everybody should be talking about this and i don't know if you talked about this with your son but the social injustice situation that's going on outside of the pandemic and um here we're doing a lot of things to to figure this out but in arizona what have you guys been doing as a community to figure this out and be, so we can stop this Thing from happening um so for me you know if you've been following me for a while yeah you may have been able to see me speak about this issue because it is something that is near and dear to my heart and i've actually experienced a loss of my first love um, when i was 18 years old he was shot in the back of the head out here um, in my hometown of casa Grande, arizona by a female dps officer at point blank range and we're talking, this is someone who was handcuffed. There was witnesses there. But this is also in 2005 before social media, before body cams were, you know, put into action. They only had, I think it was like a VHS recording in the vehicles. And of course, nothing was available, right? So um, just to be completely transparent, 
when George Floyd happened, oh, and I'm getting chills thinking about it, mm. um, you know, because George Floyd wasn't the first, you know, black person killed um, by police. You know, it's been going on for hundreds of years, but for Jamie, that was in 2005. So for me, it, it was kind of like, I struggled with my place in regards to speaking on it. Um, and that's also just kind of, cause I always knew where I stood personally, right? Where my heart was, um, it's not right. And I'm gonna stand up for what's not right. But I would see people, you know, Trayvon Martin, Philando Castile, like, it, and it's just sem- it just seemed like every single case that went nationwide was kind of reopening that trauma, right? And it, it was always, a a blow, a blow, a blow. And then I think with the nation's reaction to George Floyd, it kind of took me back to that place and and it, it, it triggered me, you Mm -hmm. know, I, I had like a, a panic attack and, and it was just very overwhelming because you have people here in the streets of Phoenix going and marching people. I know people I don't know. So it was just like, you know what? Okay. Like I said, I'm, I'm a woman of faith. And I, I felt that that was a sign for me to, you know what, Tisa, you have a platform now. When you were 18 years old in high school, that wasn't really the case. This is your time, you know, say how you feel and do what you need to do, make a stand. So I, I was out here protesting um, in the streets of downtown Phoenix. And to me, that was very healing. And one of my good friends, you know, she was like, come out, you know, let's do this. I think it'll make you feel better. Cause it was the same day that I had the panic attack. So I was in shambles. Um, and I decided to go and it truly was. And, and here's the thing, the media is going to show us the negative and they're going to show us the destruction of all of these things that are going on. But the fact of the matter is I, needed to do that because I needed to see what was real and what was actually happening. What was happening was there was peaceful protests. There was people of all colors, your brown skin, my brown skin, white skin, all coming together. And it was just so healing for me. And, and after that, I, I, I felt confident in all the things that I was talking about. So, you know, being a Latina, I'm a Mexican American, fourth generation. I'm kind of disconnected in regards to, you know, my ancestors, my grandparents, their parents, because I don't even speak Spanish. I'm truly American. So it's, I had to just find my space as to where, okay, what do the people need to know about this? How can I help? The biggest thing for me was speaking to my son about it, who is a very mixed medley of everything you know his his father is jamaican irish i'm mexican french you know so he's he's a black brown boy in america and to sit down and have the conversation with him and actually have him understand this can actually happen where i'm living was huge you know um and he wanted to go with me and he wanted to be out there in the streets protesting because he knows what's right just like his mother um, I didn't take him, you know, just because I didn't want to risk anything happening, but he knows what's going on and, and he knows that things need to change. We were at the mall yesterday and, and he wanted to get a new face mask because he had a, a old one and it was like a deal where you got two for like $20 or something. And one of them that he chose was a Black Lives Matter mask, you oh, know, wow. and I just, that just wore my heart. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a slippery slope. And I think that it's something that at this point in time, you can't necessarily ignore it. Um, but you know, you always have to be PC and just careful what you're saying in front of the, you know, who you, strangers, I guess, because you don't know a person's stance and you don't know how they'll react. And it just seems like the more times that passes, the easier it is for people just to kind of just let loose. You know, you just have this kid, this terrorist that shot, you know, Black Lives Matter protests in Wisconsin. And he's almost being praised on, you know, a certain end of that. And it's just scary. You, you, you don't know what happened, you know, how are you, how's everything going in Jersey? I mean, 
we've we've done protests here. I, I I haven't gone to the protest, but my friends they they went to the protest and they tell me how it is. And um, that's only um, that's uh, I mean protest is fine, but I think we can do other things in other ways so we can solve this issue. And um, instead of doing protests, we got to do some other things. And um, like like I'm really proud of what the sports teams are doing with the sports players. They uh, with the boycotting stuff and I like what they do uh, not playing games sometimes and uh, opting out of the season I'm really proud of the players on what they're doing but uh, but when it comes to like people in the community um, other than protests there's other ways we can solve this like what um, I mean I mean obviously people speaking out and um, and then also I think we should like they should put like uh, like a letter or petition or something. I mean, like a written statement, written statement too, to send it to someone. Uh. I I believe that people are a lot of the destruction is coming from the frustrations of not being heard, right? So you have people like Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King, nonviolent, you know, protesting. And it just seems like a lot of the frustration that is genuinely coming from the Black Lives Matter or just colored people in general, even, you know, white allies, is just from not being heard. We're, we're trying to do it peacefully. We're trying to do it through, you know, course of action, you know, the ladder of the government itself. Nothing is being done. Look at Breonna Taylor. It's been 151 days. The officers in her death are still haven't been arrested and they're still trying to find ways to cop out of that. So it's like when you don't have people that are able to make the changes, actually opening up and listening, you're gonna see um, an uprising, right? So I feel like that's kind of what's happening now. And just me personally, I, I'm kind of preparing for that. Um, for it to kind of just boil over because people are tired. People are tired of doing it the right way and still, you know, being shunned and, and being pushed to the back burner. And, and like I said, not being heard. Yeah, I'm just, uh, hopefully we can do something because this is, I, I can't, this is ridiculous what I'm seeing and it's still going on. And people, it's, it's all about ill equality right now in this generation and people don't get it. It's, it's just uh, frustrating to see. and. Um, actually, you should see a video I just posted on my Instagram feed uh, about Tara Owen speaking on uh, on this. This is really you should speak, uh, see that um, he's it was really inspiring what he said on this topic. So, but I definitely check that out. Yeah, but um, but now going to your fitness uh, career, I want to talk about your fitness. And obviously, I've seen a, a lot of your videos, and I've seen <laughs> you on Instagram lives and training people too. And so, w when did you become interested in being? Uh, obviously, fitness will always be there, but when did you become interested in being a coach and tr training these clients? Yeah. So, um, when I was pregnant with my son, he, like I said, he's going to be nine now. So, we're talking 2011. I had just started working out, right? So, I had, I was an athlete in high school, and then I kind of took a break and I was working in a call center, you know, just bad habits people always bringing, so I had been the heaviest that I'd ever been not active at the time. And, um, my boyfriend at the time was a trainer and he would always come and invite me, Hey, come to the gym. And I'd be like, nah, I'm good. Like just going to hang out do whatever 21 year olds do at the time or however old I was. And, uh, eventually one day I went to go take him lunch and he was training like this hot ass fit girl. And I was like, what? Like, this is what you do all day. You see hot girls. Okay. I'm going to get my ass in here and I'm going to start working out. And inevitably so, within weeks, I was pregnant, right? So I was doing something right. Um, and then I gained 80 pounds. I'm, I'm five foot even. I'm a tiny little Mexican woman. So any weight that you gain, it shows. And I stayed active throughout my entire pregnancy. And everybody kept saying, oh, Tisa, don't worry. You know, you're young. This is your first child. When you have them, you breastfeed. All that weight is just going to melt right off of you. Yeah, that wasn't the case. So about five months after I had him, I was still carrying about 50 to 60 pounds of excess weight. Hmm. And I was just tired of working out, not necessarily getting the results as quickly as I wanted. So then I set a goal of a fitness competition. I wanted to compete in a bikini uh, bodybuilding competition here in Mesa. And I did. So 
13 months. My son was 13 months old when I stepped on the stage. I lost almost 80 pounds, skin and bones up on the stage. And really just that prep, right? Learning how to cook my meals, having the discipline to get up and work out two times a day. I completely fell in love with the journey. And it was really hard for me to not live that lifestyle. Um, I ended up separating from my boyfriend who was my trainer. And, you know, a lot of that was um, just toxicity, mental abuse, um, verbal abuse. And there was a lot of, you know, I made you, you're, you're nothing without me. You know, I, I built you up, et cetera. So for me, it was really just, you know what, you, <laughs> I, I can do this myself and I, and I'm going to do what it takes to learn, you know, about exercise science and, and how to become a trainer. And during that process, there's about five of my friends and myself would go to the gym, LA Fitness. I think you guys have that out there in Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Um, religiously, we would train four or five days a week. It was a beautiful camaraderie that my girlfriends and I uh, created. And I was like the unofficial official trainer. So that's kind of where I got the gist of how to create workouts, how to you know set up things to where you're getting results. Because we were all you know really fit and, and, and only getting better. So that was in 2012. I officially became certified in 2015. Um, and so 2016 is when I started taking clients on from a local gym here in Gilbert um, in person. And then last year I was doing, I had taken a break. So we're talking three years later. Um, again, I have a full-time job as well. I work for a telecommunications company. So I'm a technician, a very physical job, demanding job. I, Arizona, it gets anywhere to 118 degrees and I'm working outside and wow. training two hours a day. So when you talk about boss getting shit done, yeah. your hey. girl, right? So um, I had started training on the days that I was off, three days a week in person. And it took me maybe three months and I was completely burned out. One of my husband's clients had transitioned from being an online trainer, which has always like, been so like majestic in my mind. Like, what is an online trainer? A lot of people hear that. A lot of people just flat out don't know what they do. What right. do you do? Do you show up on Zoom? Do you do workouts with your clients? How does that work? So I ended up taking her on as a business coach and I signed up with her and she started teaching me how to transition, taking my clients from in-person to online because that's what created a better quality of life for me as an individual that is still working a nine to five and it's been absolutely beautiful journey. Um, being able to create my online training program, the niche that I have that I implement into my program is something that I call mindset development. Hmm. Anybody who is an athlete, anybody who's active knows if your mind isn't there, meaning you have goals, but your mind isn't a hundred percent set on doing what it takes to actually get those results, you're going to fall off. You're going to, you're going to binge. You're going to just, you know, fall off the wagon. So I took a lot of the habits, the, um, mental perspective, the different, you know, um, I guess tools that I use on a regular basis myself to put my mind in a positive perspective like today, right? I don't feel well. That doesn't mean the, the show stops, right. you know, I'm going to grind through. So that is what I teach my clients. I work with women who are in very similar situations that I was in. Maybe they've lost themselves. Maybe they don't necessarily know how they are. They ended up where they're at, but I'm working with them on how they see themselves, how to rebuild that confidence while eating healthier eating nutritious, you know, macronutrients foods that'll help them get to their physical fitness goals while building them their custom routines and things like that. So it started out gym based and, and then the uh, pandemic happened. So I kind of had to just literally be on a whim and shift. I'm telling my clients, Hey, you do have any workout equipment at home? Send me a picture or a video of what you got. I will build you a plan based on that. So really that's kind of where things took off hmm. my business thriving during the pandemic because I was already ahead of the curve. I wasn't in the gym anymore, struggling like a lot of these, you know, uh, fitness instructors were, okay, what do I do now? I, I can't train, you know? So again, I've been blessed 
I've been able to um, continue to build my business and, and help more women. So it's, it's been a beautiful, beautiful journey. Wow. I'm very happy with how everything has turned out. Hmm. So <clears throat> like the, the gym I used to go to, um, it's called Till and Fitness and they shut down their place permanently because of this pandemic and they couldn't afford it. So I've been, yeah, so I've been going to another gym called Sets. Uh, it's called Hybrid Training. It's a much different high intensity training. Uh, it's not like CrossFit, but they do different things like uh, they full body one day. And I love that. Uh, I love doing that because I think you get more out of, if you do like a full body workout, it's, you get more out of it. And I, that's what I like. Do they use like a uh, tracking system? Like yeah. to kind of see where your heart rate is? Yeah, okay. sometimes, yeah. Yeah, we have Orange Theory Fitness. It's kind of the same idea out here. It's just high interval training systems where people um, are able to actually physically see, okay, their, their heart rate, um, how many calories they're burning. And that, that visual can be very motivating. You know, so it's cool when you look up on the screen and you see yourself, yeah. okay, I burned 800 calories. Like, fuck, I'm going to push myself and go harder. So, you know, what I've learned when I started learning from, you know, my ex who was a trainer was very box, closed mind, right? You got to do what works for you. You got to do what moves you and makes you motivated and excited to be there. Because here's the thing. I've gone through cycles where it's like, oh my gosh, okay, this is kind of boring. What can I do? I have a coach. I have a trainer. And I've had for the last six years, you have to constantly be able to push yourself. So if you like this gym, you know, you've never done, maybe you're just doing resistance training prior to, and then you get to this gym and it's like, oh shit, I'm doing my full body. I was doing muscle group splits before. So this is cool. It's new. So I always encourage people, if you're feeling like you're in a funk, or if you're in a situation where maybe you can't do what you're used to doing, step outside of that, yeah. you know, you have an open mind and, right. and just try something new and keep it fun and fresh. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Um, so <clears throat> have you been doing like Zoom workouts with your clients during this pandemic or you just send them programs? I send them programs. All my clients um, are remote, but I am working on a lot right now. I have ton of things that are going to be coming up um you know in regards to group training that's something that i have in mind that i would like to do maybe have people that would subscribe to just do an active live workout with me through zoom once or twice a week um i might be having a podcast coming out so hmm. i'm working on a bunch of different things because i truly believe that if you're not thinking about what's coming next you're always in a reactive state. I'd like to be proactive. I've learned my lesson from not, from being reactive and I'm just in a way better space now, you know, business-wise, yeah. mentally, um, just as a mature woman, you know, in business and in fitness. Hmm. <clears throat> so um, can you give us any details about your podcast or not yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I wasn't supposed to talk about this. Yes, so... Uh, yeah, don't well, no, it's fine. It, it's not that I wasn't supposed to. I was just going to kind of do it, right? right. So um, what I've learned is I used to put all of my business out there on, on social media. I'm a lot more selective nowadays. And I think that has a lot to do with me being married and meeting my husband. He's kind of helped me, you know, understand that certain things are sacred, you know? So with my podcast, I, I hired a couple of coaches to help me launch. And that was one of the things like, okay, well, how do you want to do this? Do you want to have like this huge countdown? And I was like, you know what, let's fucking do it. Like, I'm yeah. just going to put it out there. But ultimately when you look on my, on my Instagram currently, or when you look at my Facebook page, um, you see that I have a lot of team motivation videos and what those videos are, is just kind of like this. You and I talking, I talk about a subject that's not necessarily always fitness, but just things that are near and dear to me and that I think a lot of people can relate to. So my podcast is going to be just an expansion of those types of conversations. I personally am an avid podcast listener. Um, it does amazing things for me as far as, you know, getting my mind right before, you know, work or just for the week, whatever the case may be. And I just want to be an extension of that and be able to help more people on a different platform you know people always comment and say tisa yeah i love your workout videos but girl that video you posted when you said 
keep going. That was for me. I love that. So I get a lot of feedback that people love these videos. So I'm hoping that this is something that can serve and give all my followers and, you know, maybe people have never even heard of me, right. um, some, some motivation and some inspiration in a, in a time where we definitely need it. Yeah, so I'll give you a quick example, like for myself, um, and I have other friends also that do podcasts too. And uh, we all, we, uh, we all, I'm, I'm just proud of my friends, whoever does podcasts because they're working their ass off too. And I started this actually, my podcast, I started this at the beginning of the pandemic and I'm over 500 episodes already. Um, as, nice. So Consistency. It, yeah, no, because, okay. um, I know. I want to keep my friends and uh, we're all into sports. So my, my goal was, let me, so I hadn't, we had obviously I told myself, let me, I'm into fitness too and uh, sports. And let me, I told myself, let, let me start a podcast. And I did. And, uh, and it's just, I'm just honored that all these former athletes or current athletes right now that are playing come on the show just to talk. And um, I'm, and then people know me, if people are uh, calling, uh, I, I, my, one of my friends called me a legend uh, two days ago for my podcast. So that, that people are calling me a legend, best podcaster out there. Yeah. Um, and it's just because they see all my stuff and I'm getting, um, people are reaching out to me now to come on the show. And I keep telling them, you got to wait, you got to wait. I'm, all, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working on, I'm constantly on my phone 24 seven now because of this. <laughs> it's like a job being on yeah. your phone yeah. with, with, with anything that you're doing with social media, podcasts, et cetera. It's like, that thing is glue. You have to be in the now you have to know what's going on. And that's where for me, it's kind of been a struggle. I have to be honest. Um, like I said, I, I just changed my schedule again. So I have less days off. So now I'm like having to balance everything out. And, um, but you know, you cannot let up on the social stuff. You know, you got to have guests, you got to have topics, you got to have things to talk about. Um, cause there's so much stuff out there and you want to be consistent. So your kudos to you, man. I see all your soccer stuff back there. Are you a soccer player? Oh no, that's that's my brother. <laughs> ah, yeah. our football player. I mean, I, I mean, there's some basketball trophies back there too. Oh, is there? <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, but uh, no, this is the reason why. Um, that's why I like to get my workouts done in the morning because I have the rest of the day just to focus on this podcast. And I, I'm all con you, you, I'm, like, you see, I'm, I'm pretty sure you see Instagram all the time. You see my feed and you say, "Who is at the NR hour posting all the time?" So I'm constantly posting. Uh, so, so that's why I'd rather get my workouts done in the morning. Is that, is that what you would recommend to a person who has uh, tons of work to do just to get the workouts done in the morning so they don't have to worry about later on? Or A hundred percent. And I'm one of those people. And here's the shitty part. I'm not a morning person. So it absolutely sucks for me having to get up. But you know what? When you get up with purpose, even though you're tired, you know what you have to do you have a plan, you have your meal set up. You know, I'm big on preparation, time management, scheduling. Every single day I contribute about an hour, two hours in regards to preparing for the following day. So by the time I wake up, all of my meals are prepped for the next day. I have a backpack, a you know, six pack backpack that's like 250 bucks, fit six meals in there. Wow. Have everything ready to go for me to, to get to the gym, do my hour, hour and a half, two hours and then go and do a full eight hour shift and then come home and then I work from there. So I believe that if you can give a job eight hours a day, you've got to give yourself at least four. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's, and that's in regards to self-care. If you're coming home and you're just taking a bath, you're going to do a soap, you're, you're working on your podcast, you're, you're working with your clients, anything that is going to drive what your dreams and your goals are i'm all for that and that's what i promote all the time mm -hmm. uh, like um for me uh you can you can tell already that i don't give up uh until i want uh, if I, the guest <laughs> whoever i want on the show i don't give up like you can tell <laughs> by the rest of me. <laughs> you're like hey you ready hey you ready hey you ready okay good all right let's do this <laughs> <clears throat> so my next question here um do you have any advice for these professional athletes? Because uh, football players, they, they do. But when it comes to baseball players, they, I'm a Yankee fan. And I, there's like two players on this team that are like six foot seven, 280 pounds. They work out so much, but they're not really, when it comes to playing on the field, it's like a, 
it's not it's like a risk because they can get injured them injure like big guys injure themselves uh quickly so would you give them would you give tall athletes any advice how to how can they change their workout routine so they can stay healthy on the field or on the court or whatever well a lot of that is preventative stuff right so you want to make sure that you're taking you know supplementation that can help your joints your tendons things that are susceptible to injury so a shoulder injury is very common knee injuries are very common so you always want to make sure that you're supplementing you know you're taking care of yourself with the proper nutrition as well and then pre and post care so if you're a professional athlete you have the luxury of having physical therapists on site to stretch you out to wrap you up to all of these things so if you're not a professional athlete you don't have those things you're just maybe you semi-pro you want to work your way up or maybe you want to try out for a sport those are going to be the biggest factors that's going to help you build your performance because what you do on or off the field and or court is just as important what you're doing when you're performing so you're you're putting oil in your car you know what i mean that's kind of like the metaphor that i like to use you're oiling it up you're making sure your spark plugs are fresh and that you're ready to perform because if not you know you're unfortunately you're going to end up on the injury list mm -hmm. um <clears throat> so this is another important topic i want to bring up to you um obviously women women in sports uh when it comes to coaching and i obviously i'm, I'm really proud on what these uh, NFL and NBA what they're doing having women's now coaching being assistant coaches for men's sports and uh, physical therapists and so I'm going to ask you this did you ever consider doing that in the sports and just sports area too being you know, like a physical therapist for these athletes too or um personally I went to school for nursing so I I actually got into a program and then completely was just like I don't want to do this so I do have a lot of knowledge and you know um i'm very educated as far as anatomy and things like that but i haven't since the nursing thing i just kind of realized that that wasn't for me and and i felt like my path was going to be different however one of my best friends um she is a female and she is she just got accepted to um asu's journalist program here and that is have always been her goal since we were kids you know she wanted to be on espn so to be able to see like, you know, Kari and Jamel having these shows now, it's like, wow, like that is absolutely what we need because I've seen the struggle that she's had, you know, going to school, trying to get these interviews. And a lot of times, you know, it's harder for women, you know, uh, they're getting hit on, they're not being taken seriously. They're, they're dealing with sexual harassment and things like that. Mm -hmm. So for to see the the raiders you know come on and bring a female coach and then you have a bunch of sports companies that are backing that so you have the representation is huge at the end of the day it doesn't matter if you're male or female if you understand the sport and you know how it works we should be able to have a seat at the table as well you mm -hmm. know and i i believe in that 100 percent. my day job um i am a technician I am the only technician in the state of Arizona right now wow. um, that's a female for Cox Business. So, you know, I, I get to jobs and they're like, wait, you're going to do this? You're going to go on that pool? You're going to climb in my attic? You're going to do this? And I'm like, yeah, man. you know, and I'm this big. So it, it's huge. It just, the, there was one day where I had a customer. This is when I was in residential still. They had a daughter. She was about six or seven. And she was kind of just following me, following me around the entire time. And she was also a Mexican girl. And she was like, I think that it's so cool that you can do with what men do and that you're strong. So I had a little pep talk with her and I told her, absolutely, sweetie, like you can do anything that you want to do. Had I known about this opportunity that I'm doing now, I make really good money. I have great benefits. I might have spent the time doing college if I had known that I could be skilled and trained elsewhere and make that money that quick. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I didn't know they, there wasn't commercials out there. So I've done commercials, photo shoots. Um, I'm on the website promoting women in non-traditional roles. So 
I am right there on the front lines with all these women who are trying to get that exposure and representation to know that, that we're smart too. We know what we're talking about. We can get things done. Just, it's just not traditional. Um, but I encourage that, you know, and we need men like you, we need allies and people that understand how important that diversity is for it to continue to grow. Mm. So when I seen their show being um, promoted, I, I like literally just lost it. I was like, oh my God, it's so fucking dope. Because you're talking about women who left big networks to come and start their own. That's risky. But these are also women who aren't afraid to say things that, you know, a lot of women are. So it's been really, really cool in that aspect. I love it. So is she... Uh... Okay. Is she uh, currently working with ESPN or? <clears throat> oh, no, no, no. She, um, she just got accepted to Arizona state oh, oh, to okay. go to the journalists. Okay. Here. Um, but she's, she's on a podcast out here, um, for one of the community colleges and she's covering the Phoenix rising, which is a soccer team. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. But her dream is to working in Vegas with the Raiders. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm gonna. I might reach out to her. What's uh? I'm actually. That's a good. I, I might. I might bring her on uh, for, for an interview. She yeah. Yeah, she's really cool. You you'll be able to talk a lot of shit with her. Um, she knows the game. You know, um, specifically her thing is more football, but she talks everything. You know, but football. Her and her dad like this her entire life. So you you know I mean there are women out there that know the game, hmm. and I think they they should have a seat. They should be able to come and and have a seat without all of the dramatics of, you know, the stereotypical, oh, she's a girl, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Hmm. Oh. So my next question here for you, um, obviously, um, out of out of all the workouts you have done um, in your career, what's your favorite <laughs> workout? Um, I actually, for me, I love, I'm, the one thing I miss is deadlifts. I haven't done a deadlift in a while. Uh, the last time I did a deadlift was in our competition. Um, we did 400, I did a 400 deadlift. Um, 400 pounds yeah oh wow kudos to you that's huge yeah so um but that was the last time i did a deadlift so but i i when i promoted your our interview i did i put the deadlift video right behind it so people see I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> so is, that like one, <laughs> is that one of your favorite workouts or it actually is um and during the the pandemic i i felt like i totally lost strength um, I didn't in a lot of ways, but that was one thing that took a hit was my, was my deadlift. Um, I can't lift as heavy. I think my max is 305. That's what I've deadlifted before. My squat was like 3, 315, 325, I believe is my PR, my back squat. Um, but there's something I am, as far as what feels good to me and gets my endorphins going, I love just compound olympic style lifting i love to feel strong i love to hear the the iron clink i i love all of that um so any sort of deadlift um you know clean and jerk any sort of compound movements i just it does something for me man hmm. yeah I'd, I'd have to agree i would just say a deadlift all day even over the squat most girls are like oh i love squat <laughs> i train my entire body <laughs> And I encourage other women to do the same. Yeah, I mean that. that I mean, you guys are. Oh my God, you guys are such inspirations, and uh, uh, you guys do some awesome workouts. And but uh, my next question here, um, obviously, when it comes to like uh, competitions, though, like, what advice would you give these young kids or young uh, or young athletes that are trying to be in lifting competitions? What advice would you give them? You know. <laughs> this is this is a crazy I have a lot in my mind going on right now um I so when you look at my Instagram you see that I'm a coach I've actually been very involved in the Arizona fitness community since I started first show so since 2013 I've worked the shows as trophy girls I've expedited shows I have um I officially am now the official MC for the Dennis James Classic, which is the biggest bodybuilding show in Arizona every year. Holler at your girl. So <laughs> I've worked my way up. I've hosted 
um, numerous fitness expos, fitness fashion shows here in Arizona. So I put a lot of work in out here um, as far as the community. Now, I have not competed in almost five years. I have nothing against people that choose to compete. My husband is actually a, a professional bodybuilder. Um, I just feel like if you are going to take on that journey, that understand that there's a lot that comes with that. You have to be committed 10,000%, just like you and I were talking about earlier. You have to want to win more than you want anything else. So if you are a single, no kids, take advantage of that time and put it into yourself and do it now. Like that is the prime time to do it. Now, if you are not someone, because we all know that there are plenty of people that have children and, and spouses, understand that there is going to be hit. You're going to take hits. You're going to make sacrifices because when you have one person in the home that's doing prep, everything is changed around. So if you don't have that solid support system, it's that much easier to fall off and you can't afford that when you're trying to win the show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So understand that you have to be mentally already the strongest man in the world to do a prep and surround yourself with people that are going to support you and not put you down um, and help you, right? People that are going to understand when you bring a Tupperware of fish and fucking green beans to the restaurant to eat with them, not to talk crap because they know what you're doing and what you're going through. Hmm. So it's a huge, huge thing. Another thing that I think is very important, I've seen so many people get completely turned off to the competition game because mentally it can really mess with you. And by that, I mean, when you're telling yourself, let's say you're on a, you're on a prep for six months, right? You're going to binge eat if you don't have a power, if you don't have a coach that knows exactly what they're doing and put you on a reverse diet, you're going to binge eat. And then in turn, you're going to look at yourself. You're not lean. You're not vascular like you were prior to. That can take a toll mentally. And it just completely makes you be like, you know what? That's so unhealthy. I don't want to live that life. Or even along the lines of you're working with a coach and they're starving you the entire time, you're going to correlate competing with starvation competing with negative. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a very fine line that you have to take if you're going to go that route when it comes to competing. Um, and mentally, it can, it can really beat you down if you're not, if you're not sure, you don't go into it knowing what to expect. So go into it expecting there's going to be a lot of, I guess, kind of chattiness, tit for tat in this, in this game. Um, a lot of people like will kind of go behind your back and do crazy shady stuff. It's, it's just crazy. So for me, I'm good on that. <laughs> I do want to compete again at some point. I feel like I will be joining the new wellness category. If you don't know about that, that's a new category they added, um, this year, start in January, where it's more of a look between figure and bikini, where you have that really heavy strong set of legs but then they're still kind of lean and tapered up top it's kind of a hybrid between the bikini which is glute dominant and then the figure that is more back slash shoulders dominant and you're putting them in between uh, but again i know my life is way too hectic i would not be able to do that right now but eventually i would like to do that but i know that everything has to be in order and all my ducks would need to be in a row to do that. Hmm. All right, I'll give you, <clears throat> let me give you an inspiring story here. Um, I'll, I'll send you her page after my, this interview. Um, my friend, Melissa Ford, she, get, she goes to the same gym as me now, Seth. Um, <clears throat> she, she, she used to be like 300 and over 300 pounds. And now, uh -huh. she's at, yeah, now she's at one thing, 130 right now. Oh, wow. <clears throat> yeah, so awesome. she, she's such an inspiration. She's, she's a mom too. And she, I, she's like, a, I keep telling her you're, you inspire me and uh she she is uh when it comes to the workouts now she the way she works out and at the gym uh man it is a whole different level of like, yeah but uh yeah yeah so I'll, I'll i'll send you her page so you can follow her follow her on instagram she she's such an inspiration this lady uh so i'll send you that's uh 
that's one inspiring story um, that we should share, that I should share. Sure. Yeah, I'd love to check her out. Yeah. So um, I have a couple more things here for you. Uh, but the first one here, have you connected with any uh, famous workout people like Dwayne Johnson or, or Arnold Schwarzenegger before? Gosh, Dwayne Johnson. Have you like connected with them? <sighs> that would be a dream come true. <laughs> um, no, most for the most part, like uh, I've met, you know, Cass Martin. She's huge. She oh, actually, I, I, I thought she's amazing. Cass she Martin. actually just moved to Arizona. So I've been trying to go and check her out. She's training out of a gym in Scottsdale. Um, so I've met her complete sweetheart. Like I said, when I was hosting the Arizona Fitness Fashion Expo, all the people that came out, um, I've been able to meet them and kind of talk with them. Um, we were going to have C2 Fletcher, but it ended up not coming at the last second. Um, Mike Rashid, um, he actually lives out here. So I'm able to see him, you know, Dennis James. Um, a lot of the people that are in the either NPC or the IFBB, not necessarily like an actor or anybody like that, but it'll happen for me. You marked my words. Yeah. I'd love to train Drake someday. <laughs> Drake. <laughs> you know, of, a buff on Kevin Hart. You know, speak, either one of them would work. Speaking of Cass Morton, she, um, that lady is her her workout. Her workouts are crazy, like yours. So she, uh, 100%. Ha, have you like worked out with her in person before? No, no. It was all just you know business related. Um, I don't know what they do because she trains out of a gym that's in North Scott, so it's kind of a ways from me. Um, but you see her videos, you know, she's always posting in that gym. So I don't know if she like goes at a specific time to kind of keep it. Cause I would imagine that when you're that popular, you have millions of followers, it'd be difficult for you to train and, and actually shoot footage in there. So I'm assuming they probably have something worked out where it's like, okay, you know, leave her alone during this time. Don't bother her or something like that. But I would love to, um, I truly admire her because I've been to a lot of different expos and things like that and met people that I thought were really cool. Um, I'll give you an example. So I was expediting the Dennis James Classic and it was a bikini pro show and there was a, an athlete there and I was I had been following her for like two years at the time as I was getting to know, um, you know, the, the competition lifestyle and I was just so disappointed. Like she was such a beard, inconsiderate. Everything was about her and I was just like, unfollow. Cass, on the other hand, I, I aspire to be someone like that. She was very humble, complete sweetheart. She didn't change at all, you know, no matter who was around. She was just true to herself, and I respect that. Speaking of another fitness lady, um, I had, uh, I'm sure you know her, Marcella Reyes. Yes. I had her on the show before a couple months ago. Oh, too. Yeah. She, she's, such another, she's another inspiration. And uh, at the end of the interview, I made her do a push-up competition while she was Oh, training. my God. So the funny thing is, actually, she did the interview while training training her client. Oh my gosh, she's like, hang on, five more, five more, like five right, more. Cool. <laughs> That's, a, That's that cool. was the best. That was the best part. Um, <laughs> she's like, we're here live. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, please don't ask me to do any sort of workout right now. My um, stomach is not having it. <laughs> so before I let you go, um, I do this uh, rapid fire segment with all my guests that come on the show. You ready for this? Yep. All right. <clears throat> Favorite food? Oh, why would you have to ask me that? I love ceviche. Oh, nice. I love, ceviche. Yeah. I love ceviche too. Shrimp ceviche. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shrimp. <laughs> um, so, uh, do you, how, many, how many cheat days do you put in your workout uh, routine? As of late, I've been doing like three. Okay. But that, that stopped this week. So, I'll do one. I'll do one in two weeks. But typically, I'll do three throughout the week. Kind of break it up, make it easier for me. So this, um, obviously, some people, some people don't get the opportunities to get to their goals and um, live their dreams. But for you, how grateful are you that you're doing your the thing you love right now, being a technician and being a coach, and um, and then being a, and it's ha having your son see you be successful in life, and obviously your husband too. So how grateful are you that you have two things? that you love? I am ridiculously grateful. I live my life in a gratitude mindset every day. You know, I pray, I thank God for everything that he's done for me because at the end of the day, where I'm from, 
how I was raised in the city where I come from, a lot of my peers are either dead or in prison, you know, and here I am thriving and I don't take any of that for granted. Like you said, you're a warrior. You're a warrior. That's who you are. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so when it comes to coaching, are you a hard nosed coach? I am not. Oh. Um, and reason being is I've had that type of coach and I just feel like the type of clients that I have, there's absolutely no need for that. You know what I mean? You can be compassionate and also assertive. You know, I believe in, I'm a very, very blunt person. You can hear in just how I speak. Like I always speak my mind and speak the truth. Um, so there's a way to make it work where you can have them understand, hey, you need to get this done, but also not be a dick about it. Hmm. Um, what do you, what else, what, what else do you like to do outside of uh, fitness and, uh, technician? <laughs> um, I love to spend time with my family. I'm very family oriented. Um, and I also include my close net friends in that group because, um, I've just learned over years, you know, I'm, I'm 30, how old am I? I think I'm going to be 30, <laughs> 34 this year. So I'm 33 now. I always forget how old I am. Um, I have understood the value in the quality of people that you have versus the quantity. You know, Scottsdale is a huge city out here to party. It's like one of the party cities in the nation. And I did a lot of that when I was young. Over that, um, I'm a lot more mindful of putting my energy into things, people that serve me and that I can give something back to because that's what brings me joy. Yeah, I'm 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 25. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you for making me feel old. No, <laughs> no, you're not old. You're young. <laughs> <laughs> A tour, okay. <laughs> I, I and I'm just gonna say this. My 30s has been, oh my God, so much better than my 20s. <laughs> so it's only good things to come. If you if you're already doing things that you're passionate about now and you feel like you found your lane and your purpose, it's only going to get better from here. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> the last two things here before you go, um, this is a question I've been bringing up to all my guests and I'm sure you guys, you guys watch sports too, right? Yes. Uh, okay. <clears throat> who's, your, who's your favorite sports team? I was born into the reign of the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. Um, uh, yes. Okay, cool. It's like, you're either going to want to fight me or you're going to hang up on me or you're going to love it. Um, when Arizona didn't always have a football team, the Cardinals are new, right? Mm -hmm. So in Arizona, if you were Hispanic, it was like either you're a, a Raiders fan because of Cali's right there or a 49ers because in the nineties, that was our rival team, right? We had America's team. And then I was either your Cowboy fan. So all of my mother's side was hardcore Cowboys. I, if I was to send you some of my pictures from elementary school, dude, I had a either Emmett, Irvin, Aikman yeah. every single day. Yes, the authentic shoes and all of that. <laughs> super hardcore, super tomboy. That's how I grew up. You ask anybody, they'll tell you. <laughs> Tisa wore jerseys all the time. Now, basketball. <laughs> you, watch college basketball. basketball. you watch basketball too? Yeah. Well, at that time, I watched a lot of college basketball. My godmother was super into that. Um, lately I haven't really been able to watch a lot of the bubble stuff, but I'll sneak highlights here and there. Um, but I, I stay informed with my girlfriend. I'll tell you about, yes. like, Hey, what happened with that? Okay. This happened. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> they're, She's they're, my they're doing a great job with the bubble situation. Um, and also in the WNBA women's basketball, they're, they're doing a great job there. And, um, I'm really proud of the players and the, the commissioner, the, I should say the, the head people, the front office. Uh, they were on top of that. They were on top of everything. During the season, you know, the NFL, yeah. like, they didn't have they, they didn't have it together at all. And, and for me, I, I, I'm a fan of the NFL. Um, so I was just kind of like, yeah. well, okay, well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm hoping they have football this year. I, 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 like, I'm, like I said, I'm a, I'm a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. And um, I'm, I, I, I believe – my friends keep telling me change team. I said no. I bleed blue and silver until I die. <laughs> yeah. I'm boys all the way. That's that's the um, we're America's team still. Well, I don't care what people say. We're still America's team. And um, actually, speaking of former cowboy, I had a, actually had, I I had a current cowboy on my show recently, a couple oh. weeks, a couple months back, and 
Uh, he still plays for the Cowboys, and I'm, I'm working on getting a former Cowboy on, Tara Owens, like I just mentioned to you. Um, he said that he's, he will, he'll come on soon, but he's busy with all this stuff going on. But he said eventually um, that he'll come on, and uh, if he comes on, that, this, is, this would be a, uh, an, an honor. Me too, right? Yeah, if he comes on. And I keep, I keep sending him messages just, just to keep tabs and see if he, doesn't, if, if he didn't forget. But he said no, he, he said he'll come on soon. But um, yeah, so that's the one I'm working on. But man, I'm uh, n- now we relate to each other. <laughs> you're like, okay, you're cool now. Now I'm invited to the cookout, right? Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so the last, few th- you your- yeah. So the last few things. This is an important one. I, I always bring up to my guests, and um, this is uh, about the late Kobe Bryant. Uh, obviously, we lost a few other le- uh, people this week. Um, Cedric. Bu- I mean, Chadwick Bossman, that was a, tra- that was a, a shocking news. Um, but if, yeah, can, if you don't mind, can you speak on the legacy of him? If you watched any of his, mo- his movies or? Oh, a hundred percent. I was up last night watching the tribute that they did to him on ABC and I was just bawling my eyes out. Um, and the thing is what a lot of people are saying, you kind of hear what's going on in the media right now in regards to him is that he lived every day like it was his last. And he was doing that in silence, um, which I don't know what his intention was behind that. They're saying it's because he didn't want to like have people stress, you know, or he didn't want people to worry. The way that Chadwick lived his life is how we should all strive to live our lives. You know what I mean? In, in that place of gratitude, in that place of feeling like, you may not have tomorrow. We all kind of take that for granted. And just to see the legacy and the impact that he made in the industry within those four years of him having cancer, it's like, to me, I'm big on purpose. And that's a key word that I hear everybody say, talking about when they're referring to him is like, oh, he lived in purpose. He always spoke this and then I watched the the uh, commencement speech that he did at Howard University and I'm all about that you know so I feel in my heart very connected to him and I know that he is in a place now where he knew for sure that he did everything he was supposed to do. and that's kind of what I preach to my son is son yeah we're here but we're not always here what is the legacy that you're going to be leaving right? So that just kind of reaffirmed all my beliefs in that. And it was just really admirable to see him go out that way on in his time, how he wanted to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Leaving us with all these amazing blockbuster movies, you know, to hold on forever. Yeah. So I, I just, my heart hurt. Go out to his black cancer you know oh Oh, your screen keeps freezing okay can you hear me sorry yes oh okay there you go okay we got you um yeah so yeah this is um yeah so uh this is a question actually i'm trying to get everyone's perspective on uh this is the one i keep uh, asking my guests and I actually have the shirt on right now, a girl that, about Kobe Bryant. I've seen that, yeah. His daughter, Gianna. I caught my eye. Yeah, um, and he was one of my role models growing up, and it's still hard not to see him here anymore with his daughter, and I still feel for the family, and uh, it's just devastating. But do you guys remember where you were at that day, and uh, what did they mean to you? Because you always, when it comes to fitness, I always had the mama mentality when it comes to fitness. I believe that 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 was his legacy is that mentality. You know, um, I had actually traveled to California for a quinceanera. That's a Mexican traditional um, womanhood birthday party that they have when you turn 15. So we were out there and we were actually coming back and my brother was with me and my husband and my son. And we had stopped at a rancher's market sort of you know, huge Mexican grocery where they have food and we were like grubbing on all this good ceviche and carne asada. And the next thing you know, it just looked like everybody stood still and then you just heard people crying. And we were like, what is going on? Next thing you know, I started getting all these texts. My cousin's crying. She's calling me. Did you hear about Kobe? And we're like, 
what? And it, it was not even 20 miles from where we were. So it was just, it's just crazy. You know, it's just kind of that tap on the shoulder that, you know, the universe is going to give us, you know, Hey, listen, you're not invincible. You, your life can be taken at any time, you know? So I just always have that conversation with myself, you know, if I was to be taken tomorrow, did I live in my purpose? You know, and I think that that's something that Kobe instilled in all of us, you know, as well as Chadwick. Um, and that's what makes you memorable. Nobody's, I mean, people are going to talk about your muscles. People are going to talk about your performance, but people are always going to remember how you made them feel. Yeah. So I try to hold on to that when I get wrapped up in my head about what I'm looking like, if maybe I'm not as lean as I'd like to be. That does not define you. What defines you is that in your legacy. Yeah. And the so, last, yeah. RIP Kobe. Yeah. And the last thing here, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and essential workers? Oh, absolutely. Um, I have I have a few people that I know and love dearly. I'm praying for them all the time. I'm praying for you guys all the time. God bless you guys. Stay safe you know, um, try to do as much as you possibly can to educate. You see somebody doing something maybe a little reckless, you know, put it out there in a kind way. Some people just truly may have not had the training. And I know that sounds crazy to take certain precautions, you know, so just keep doing the work and stay safe out there, guys. Well said. And uh, thank you, Tisa Rodriguez, aka T Dollar Fit. <laughs> <laughs> For coming on the podcast um, i'll be posting this on all social media formats and the full interview will be on um youtube uh, youtube twitter the link uh will be on twitter youtube facebook for some reason on instagram it only posts 15 minutes of the interview so i gotta oh yeah change that, that. i was bummed out about that yeah but um i'll post a, i'll tell everyone to I, i'll post a youtube link on my story so people can see the full you the one in youtube and but uh, this has an, uh, been an honor for you to come on and uh, thank you. And I hope you feel better and um, uh, yeah, keep working hard. And I love, I'm looking forward to more workout videos from you and uh, more content. That podcast when I get up and launch. Uh, yeah. So I want, I want to, uh, <laughs> I want to be on your podcast and we should do like a collab show one day. If you, for sure. Yep. Yeah. I, I got, I'm, I'm still drafting up a bunch of ideas for the episode. So yeah, I'd love to have you on. I appreciate you reaching out. Um, keep doing what you're doing, you know, and congratulations on all your success. Oh, and then uh, I'll send you my friend Melissa's page and then I'll send you, sure. um, I, I did a, a, a tire workout the other day, so I'll send that to you. Oh, nice. Okay. Bring <laughs> it on. I got some tires at the gym I go to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you and your family stay safe and uh, thank you again. You're very welcome. You take care. Yep.